test for you to determine your level. And after 10 years of doing very well on French, because he was a good student, passed every year, got high marks in French, they classified him as a beginner. Because, of course, the test was all based on grammar. And all of the grammar instruction that kids get at school, I believe they're largely just able to retain it until the next test. And it has relatively little long-term impact on them. So he was able to go to the teacher at Yale and say a few words in French, so they moved him into second year. So he wasn't a beginner. But after 10 years in our school system and all those credentialed teachers, and they all went through you know, uh, seminars on how to teach better, and then at the end of that, a very bright student, uh, it gets classified as beginner. And I mentioned that we had a similar experience in New Brunswick where 30 minutes a day, 12, ye uh, 12 years of language, and no one can speak the language. When I have had uh, the opportunity to be with English Canadians, where they had to speak French. These are English Canadians who have studied French at school for 10 years or however long. They don't speak grammatically correctly. All they're able to do is remember those few words that somehow, through whatever exposure they had to the language, have stuck. So they will say, uh, moi, manger, uh, pain, uh, uh, s'il vous plaît. Uh, that's about all they can say. They can't put together a proper sentence because the only thing that sticks is that the word is the words that they acquired largely through their listening and reading. So, uh, you know, the idea that I, as a layman and as a keen language learner, am not qualified to comment on what to do in a classroom, I don't accept. Uh, someone commented on one of my videos that a lot of the things that I say about language learning, I say those because I have a lot of experience of language learning. Uh, but someone, and, and he even said that someone who has learned two or three languages would probably do what you do. But someone who has never learned a language needs to be guided. And I would agree with that, uh, but not guided in terms of taught the rules of the language. He, such a learner needs to be guided in how to learn. That's what they should teach in the classroom, how to learn. If we go back to the basic trinity of language learning, attitude, time on task, and the ability to notice, um, the teacher has to focus first of all on that attitude. They have to get that person somehow motivated to learn if and, and that is a difficult thing to do but uh, in response to my uh, person in Japan I think one important ingredient in the classroom is enthusiasm enthusiasm about the language enthusiasm about the students about the subject matter enthusiasm can be infectious I remember we had a Latin teacher at school he used to come in and he was very enthusiastic he was also a football coach and uh, he would bring in his books. And in those days, we had to stand up when the teacher walked in the room. And then we sat down. And his thing every day was he would drop the books from about three feet high onto his desk. And we had to sit down before his books hit the desk. A stupid thing. It woke us up. And another thing he had us doing is we had competitions on who could uh, decline um, Latin nouns the fastest. So I can still, to this day, I can go... Blum, 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 please. That's bellum. Bellum, 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 belly, blow, blow, blah, 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 blum, please, please. That's all I remember from Latin. But doing something that was fun and yet exposing me to the words, exposing me to something connected with the language is positive. So enthusiasm, making it fun. Uh, I think that uh, the teacher should speak in the native, in, in the language of instruction. But I think the students should be allowed to answer in their own language. The main thing, again, is to get them involved with the language. Um, don't give them hard questions. Uh, for, for example, I've, I've now, you know, when I, ha I have this uh, teach yourself, this old teach yourself checkbook that I'd had for many years and I discovered and I was going through it. And of course, I always avoid the exercises because I hate doing exercises. And, and I think the time that I spend thinking about the language actually is a waste of time. I'm better off getting exposed to the language. Now, I know this goes contrary to the idea that you've got to do things in order to retain them, but at least my brain doesn't work that way. But what I found very effective was to read the answers. So if there's a question about the date of case, and all the answers are going to be in the date of case. So I just read 10 answers. So I get this concentrated exposure to the date of case. And then the next one is maybe, you know, the uh, genitive case or certain forms of the verbs. 
So as long as there are, it could be numerals. So they're testing on one specific subject. Rather than putting me through the problem of thinking about it and getting it wrong, I just go to the answer, read the answers. It's a concentrated dose of certain patterns. And the fact is that so much of the beginner language content is so boring anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you might just as well be reading and listening to this concentrated dose of a certain pattern as listening to some silly story, in my opinion. So uh, what I would do in the classroom is, yes, storytelling, she suggests, yes. Uh, I would help them basically try to get them motivated and tell them where they can go to find good content, have them understand that, that the first goal is comprehension. Uh, right now, the goal is to pass a test to get some obscure grammar point right for the test and then subsequently forget the rule. Uh, or there's this hope that somehow we're going to speak very early and I just don't believe that. And I think we would do far better if we said, look, your goal is to understand the language. If you can get to where you can understand the language, everything else will fall into place over time. And in order to understand the language, you have to do a lot of listening and reading, but find stuff that interests you. And I also don't believe the uh, crash in theory that you've got to be reading stuff that's 95% known words. You would take forever to increase your vocabulary. Uh, you know, I've been working at Czech now and, and uh, most of my stuff when I started was 50% unknown words uh, and you just have to have a, a methodology but you have to expose yourself to more words than that uh, the 95 percent known words i don't think is realistic um, so take the pressure off performing uh, don't force the kids to listen to other kids in the class reading out loud and saying things in the language uh, sure if they want to speak in the class that's fine if they don't that's fine too it's more important for the kids to listen to the teacher who's speaking with the right accent and so forth and so on. Uh, so the classroom becomes a sort of a motivation center, a source of the language from the teacher, if the teacher is a native speaker, a guide on how to learn. You have to, and this is difficult, but you have to persuade people who have never learned another language and never learned to speak another language well, you have to persuade them that this is something that they can do. And I think a lot of first time persons on their first language, they don't think they can do it. And they have all these other faults. They are convinced that they have to nail everything down and whatever they learned in the first chapter, they have to be able to produce it and stuff. And so you have to disabuse them of that and say, look, don't worry about the results in one week or one month. Worry about the results in a year from now. And so focus entirely on passively allowing your brain to acquire the language. And let's do things that are fun. Uh, I mean, I think this is going, getting back to my Latin thing. I think that's, that's kind of fun. You could have competitions with words, you know, uh, uh, if again, if people were using Link, which I of course would recommend, then they could bring in their vocabulary lists and uh, you could have a screen and you could flash up multiple choice questions or you could flash up uh, even flashcards and, and have teams of people competing and shouting out the answer and anything that gets them going and, and has them somehow interacting with the language is good. And uh, things should be easy. Like we've introduced at Link now a multiple choice question, which is dead easy because um, it's usually quite obvious which one of the four is correct, but it's, it's very effective because it's easy. So up pops a, a word, a new word in check with four choices. I pick the one that I know is right. I press the button. What do you know? I'm right. Good for me. And then there's a text to speech icon there so I can even listen to it and then do the next and the next, and the next. And it's very gratifying. You're getting the right. I'm, I might get one in 10 wrong, but nine out of 10, I'm getting right. I feel great. Um, so there are little things like that, that, that uh, I mean, even now at Link we have this dictation thing, we're using the text to speech and you listen to a word and then you have to write it out. And all of these things are just different ways of interacting with the words to, to, that I find not too boring, not too boring. But most of the time, of course, you have to be listening and reading, but in the classroom, you could let people read. But I think to get some fun activities going around the language in some way that, that makes it seem fun for them. But at the same time, making them understand that, that uh, the success of their language learning depends entirely on them, that you cannot teach the language. The teacher cannot teach it. They have to learn it through enough exposure. Uh, the teacher can help, can answer questions, can point certain things out. Uh, but ultimately, if they are not consuming enough of the language on their own, they aren't going to learn. So uh, it's a bit of a ramble, and I realize I'm well over my 10 minutes here, but uh, those are some thoughts on uh, the role of a teacher in a language class. Uh, thank you for listening. Bye for now.